Hello and welcome to topic 8 programming and this is video 1 and we're going to be looking at programming concepts. This is for the IGCSE and O level computer science course. So we start off topic 8 programming and we're going to be looking at declaring the use of variables and constants and we're going to understand or we're going to try to understand the use of basic data types. Okay this is a big topic. So first of all programming concepts we need to understand and use five basic constructs when developing a program the data that's used variables constants and arrays we need to understand sequence which is an order of steps in a task selection choosing a path through a program iteration the repetition of a sequence of steps in a program and operators used arithmetic for calculations logical and boolean for decisions to be made Okay, but we'll start with variables and constants. When we start to write computer programs, we usually need to store data while your program is working with it. For example, you may want to hold values entered by the user so that they could be used in a computation or to keep a running score while a game is being played. Um, you will store these values in named variables. A variable is a data item whose value can change during the program's execution. Thus, as its name applies, variable, the value can vary. For example, name. Mr. Bulmer has been assigned to the value name, hence the little arrow here. But it could be Mr. Bulmer, it could be Mr. Smith, it could be Mr. or Mrs. anybody. Um, the position, um, teacher, or whatever position that person has got, and the age, of course, would be a numeric um, value and that will be stored in the variable age. Whereas constant, again as the name applies, this is something that's fixed. Um, a constant is used in programming when a value needs to be available to the program but it will not change during the execution of the program. A good example of this might be pi. Uh, this is an example of a constant. Pi doesn't change, it's, it's a fixed value. And um, we're going to use this later on in the, in the video. We're going to use pi to three decimal places, 3.142. It is always considered good practice to declare the constants and variables to be used in your computer programs. Some languages require explicit declarations which specifically state what type of data the variable or the constant will hold. Other languages require implicit declarations where the data type is based on the value assigned to it. These declarations can be at the start of the program or just before the data is used for the first time. Now in pseudocode we would write declarations for variables such as just using the word declare and for constants would use the word constant so we can tell the difference between the two for example here I've assigned an integer value to my first and second variable whereas the constant has been assigned and this is what the arrow is about it's been assigned a permanent value of 500 for the first constant and 100 for the second constant now in Python again we don't necessarily have to do this with these these can be any number of names um, it's entirely up to you what you put in I've called it a variable here var for variable and I've got the const for first constant and second constant or I could write it in this this manner also in Java it works a slightly different way when using Java the constant values are declared as variables with a final value so no changes can be made um, these final variable names are usually capitalized to show that they cannot be changed. However, variables are usually declared as they are used rather than at the start of the code. For example, int first var, int second var, or final int, final int for the constants, okay, and they've been assigned values. So what does all this mean? Well, we do have some basic data types. Now we have basic data types in databases. We also have basic data types in our programming languages. These, the basic ones are integers, which are whole numbers, for example, 42. There we go in Python, first integer equals 42, the variable name. Real numbers, um, which are decimal numbers, a 42.5, real numbers. Now in Python, these are called floats, and you will see that in a few moments. We've got characters, which is just basically a single alphanumeric character, a number or a letter, for example, mail. Um, string, which is usually um, a sentence or one word, anything more than one character. And then we've got Boolean, which is just true or false, yes or no. Okay, so the flag here is true. We also need to touch upon inputs and outputs. 
most programs um, will feature some form of input and output okay for a program to be useful the user needs to know what they are expected to input so a message would appear please enter the security pin for your um, for your bank account please enter your password please enter your address all these are inputs and need to be inputted by the user so each input needs to be accompanied by a prompt stating the input required in a programming language the data type of the input must match the required data type of the variable where the input data is to be stored all inputs default to strings so if the input should be an integer or a real number commands are also used to change the data type of the input for instance in python this is int for input just a real a, a regular number or an integer number or float for a real number okay here's a little example of inputs and outputs just a straightforward um, string variable your name equals input please enter your name a message a prompt and then print hello a string hello and then the variable your name so the output for that would be please enter your name I've inputted Robert and it would give me it would print out hello and then the value stored in your name which in this case is Robert okay now I've said a little challenge for you based on a cylinder and calculating the volume of a cylinder now if you want to pause the video and have a go yourself in either in either pseudocode or in Python or another high-level language I'm going to show you the results in a few moments so for the pseudocode I've declared the radius and the length to be real numbers okay that's what these two variables are going to be they're going to be real numbers my constant for pi is going to have a value a fixed value of this 3.142 we're going to output enter values of um, length and radius the user will input the length and the radius a variable volume is going to store a calculation i.e. the constant multiplied by two times radius times by the length and then finally we're going to print or we're going to output I could have used output I'm going to use print there output the volume okay when we do this challenge in Python I've written it slightly differently we have and I've also included some um, hashtags for comments so the constant of pi I've created a constant called pi, uh, constant pi and this has got a, um, a fixed value of 3.142 basically to three decimal places um, it can be any name we want but I've called it constant pi okay then we have two variables and these are float variables which means they can be stored as decimal numbers so the radius um, a message to say please enter the radius and again the same with the length both float variables and then we have a um, variable called volume and in volume we've stored the calculation radius times radius times length times constant pi and then finally I've got a print statement at the bottom in this we have a message volume of the cylinder is and then it's going to call upon volume the variable volume um, to output the value that we have from this so we'll run it and see save the program okay please enter the radius of the cylinder uh, I'm going to put four please enter the length we'll put seven and it gives me a value volume of the cylinder is 351.904 now we can go further with this and we can put um, the measurements in and various other bits and bobs but just for now that is how I would solve that problem Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.